players of all levels use pentatonic scales due to the accessibility of their pattern and the versatile expression they offer our solos. But if you're going to get the most from pentatonic soloing, you'll want to incorporate techniques such as string bending. Here we have an extended B minor pentatonic pattern. Remember that this pattern is movable and can be positioned on any root, but we'll stick with B for these examples. You could see this pattern as divided into three overlapping segments. We have a lower left box, a central box, and an upper right box. As we'll discover, by using this extended pattern, we can easily access bend points to and from any tone in the scale. First, we're gonna label our tones. It's not so important what you name them. This is more about being able to identify related positions within the pattern. Here, I'm labeling the positions with the scale's interval numbers. Each tone occurs in several positions within the pattern. Our first bend will be a whole step bend from the flat seven to the one. So the one will be our target pitch for the bend. As you can see, there are three occurrences of this same string pairing in the pattern. Start by playing through them as a picked sequence, resting on the one each time, ensuring you can jump between positions without hesitation. Now we're going to play the same sequence, but using bends, starting with the second string. To make sure you're hitting the target pitch accurately, you can pick the target before you bend to it, so your ears have a reference pitch for the bend. This is obviously just for practice, as you'll eventually want to be able to bend to pitch without this reference. Place your third finger on the flat seven and bend up to the one. As always, you should support your third finger bend with your second and first finger behind it. Kind of like three people lifting a heavy object instead of one. Try both slow and quick bends. Now try exactly the same on the fourth string. And finally, the sixth string. This time we can just use our index finger as there's less resistance in the string. Now we're gonna incorporate these bends into a simple phrase. Pick any three or four tones close to the bend point and use them as an approaching sequence. For example. Next, try stringing the bend points together into a connected sequence. For example. These are all good exercises for both building finger strength and targeting bend pitches accurately within a larger sequence. We can use exactly the same process for targeting the fifth of the scale. This time we play a whole step bend from the four.
Another whole step bend accommodated by the scale is from flat three to four. Again, practice moving to these bend points within larger phrases. You'll want to experiment with using different fingers for the bend depending on how you approach these positions. These three whole step bend points are a good place to start with creating expressive, improvised licks from the minor pentatonic scale. They're versatile enough to work over most minor key chord changes and conveniently touch on various natural colour tones within a minor key progression. Now, there's another whole step bend that effectively takes us outside the pentatonic scale. This can be seen as targeting the major second interval which has a very powerful quality in minor keys. We'd typically bend to it from the one. So even though we're using minor pentatonic as our core scale, Occasionally touching on these outside tones can give your pentatonic licks more colour. Let's now take a look at some half step bends, which are a bit more subtle, but can still add more expression to our licks. Here I'm bending from the second to minor third, a strong target tone that sits naturally over most chords in a minor key. bending from the 4 to the flat 5. The flat 5 is commonly seen as part of the blues scale, a 6 tone variation of minor pentatonic. You can use the flat 5, also known as the blue note, to add, unsurprisingly, a bluesy touch to your licks. <laughs> On the subject of blues, often minor pentatonic is played over a sequence of dominant seventh chords. So on the tonic of a typical blues progression, we'd have a major third voiced in the chord. We can complement this by bending the flat three upper half step to the three. What this does is aid a stronger resolution to phrases over the dominant seventh tonic chord, since the major third is a strong chord tone. Finally, let's look at a couple of larger bends, starting with a bend from the root to minor third of the scale. Now, these bends, equivalent to a minor third interval, will take a bit more practice, as they require more strength to reach the target pitch. However, used sparingly, they can give your licks that extra level of expression. They're also a good way to stretch out new strings. For the bend between one and flat three, we typically only use the second and fourth string positions. A similar minor third bend can be made between the five and flat seven. Typically, we'd use the third string position. Practice 
practice these bend points individually to start with and then gradually combine them in your licks. The more you play around with different combinations and approaches, the more quickly your eyes and ears will connect where your fingers are in the pattern with what you want to express in your lead. In general, it's useful to think of lead phrasing in terms of target pitches. You can then try different ways of approaching these targets, whether using a bend, slide, hammer on, or a straight picked sequence. By becoming more aware of these targets and anticipating them as you play your licks, you'll find it's not so important where you start your bend, rather hitting the target with accuracy and purpose. However, the bend points we've looked at can be thought of as familiar reference positions around the scale pattern for approaching your target pitch. For more help with pentatonic bends, visit the lesson page linked in the description. Also, please don't forget to like and share this video if it's helped. Cheers. Mm -hmm.